go ahead and get started because we, we got lots of cool stuff to talk about today. Um, so let me just welcome everybody uh, to the Aspen Gathering. Thank you for coming. Um, I think most people have been here already, except maybe Gabriel. Um, so thank you for coming, Gabriel. It's nice to see you. Um, perfect. Well, let's just kick this off. Um, so first, before we went into anything else, I wanted to make sure that we welcomed our new Aspen teammates. Um, her name is Cody. So she's here with us today. Um, she is the new Aspen support analyst. So um, she's been helping monitor our ticket queues and get tickets where they need to go and make sure that they get um, you know, quick and proper attention. So she has been such a valuable addition to the team already. Um, Let's see. Cody, do you want to just say hi or introduce yourself or anything? Oh, Cody might mm -hmm. be frozen. Oh no, Cody froze. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> Sorry, the internet. <laughs> Well, welcome, Cody. Um, yeah, we we just love her already. She's doing so great, um, and we're really happy. So, say hi, wave, give a thumbs up, clap, <laughs> yay, Cody! <laughs> All right, so let's move on to um, Aspen stuff. More Aspen stuff. Uh, we have Mark who's gonna give us our Aspen updates in an instant. So here we go. So share screen here. Um, so this release, we actually had two releases, um, both in the last month. So we had a 22.01.10, as well as our 22.02.00. Um, the 22.01.10 um, was primarily for some of our Sierra libraries that are that were going live. Um, in a time frame that was between releases. Um, we did a lot of Sierra work. Um, there were some concerns with the patron API and the security of the patron API. So we worked hard to remove um, anywhere that was being used. Um, and there were also some differences um, with the configuration of Sierra. So um, historically we'd used um, screen scraping um, to integrate with Sierra. And there were enough differences that it wasn't worth using screen scraping anymore. So we switched to use the Sierra APIs, um, which is gonna be great for us like long-term. Um, we're gonna be able to do so much more with it um, and just make sure that every uh, Sierra instance is behaving the same way. So that was all great work. There's a lot of detail there in terms of what we actually replaced, um, but it was a lot of just changing stuff to use Sierra APIs, um, stuff that takes work that's not exciting, that just results in, hey, you can place a hold, um, which is good. Um, and you can could place it before, but you can place it better now. Um, and then just a few other things. So some little tiny updates. So like sorting mark records by tag. So for all of those ILSs that export mark records in random order, the tags now show up properly in stack view. So should be easier to read. Um, then yeah, there are some other things, uh, but just, just some little things there fixed. Um, 2202, um, again, there's a theme right now of we're doing a lot with uh, um, ILSs. So um, the main things that are like massive, big fun things to demo right now are all in Lita. Um, so Kirsten, I'm going to have you share screen and we'll talk through some of those things. Um, so Aspen Lead is getting an update. It is available now in the test server. Um, so let's just take a look. Let's start with, um, we're going to log in. So we're updating Lita to be able to be um, branded by, by library. So it's going to be you will be able to release your own version. Um, we'll show that in a little bit. So um, 
we've done some updates to managing browse categories. Um, so making those refresh properly and that kind of thing. Um, let's start, let's look at the search page too. So all of the quick searches can now be customized by library. Um, so if you don't like US history dinosaurs, um, I forget what the other ones were. There was a couple of other ones. Um, these are the ones that we've customized because we like cheese. Um, so you can customize those uh, in your own library settings and they will appear when you log in. Um, I can't really see it here, but we'll go ahead and go to the card. Can't really see it, but these colors, so like that light blue is the same color that is on our Aspen um, test instance. So the theming now from your library is now applying as well as the logos. Um, so like there where it's got the main library and there's the logo, um, that is being drawn from Lita, um, which is really cool. So you can, can do that and you can upload and customize those. We were previously using the fave icon, um, but now there's like some actual customization you can do. Um, we've also, yeah, let's go into the can. Um, let's see, what are we looking at here? Um, <laughs> and the more. So we've added a dark theme. So you, if you click into night, you can see our dark theme. Um, we can click around a little bit there. Um, so like we can go to discover and we can have a dark mode for the people that want those. Um, we can rotate the, the screen. So it'll now work properly in either portrait or landscape mode, um, which is cool. We can rotate back and forth. We get a lot of capability with that. Um, what else am I missing here? Or should we show a uh, library branded app? Yeah, let's show. Um, and this is just an example of another uh, one. So we're using Knox County, Tennessee a, as a uh, example. Um, so the idea here is that the splash screen is branded. This login screen is branded. We still need to select our library. Um, we're looking at making this possibly be a, an optional step, um, depending on the library. Um, but then we can log in. And all of the colors um, obviously are different. The browse categories are different. Um, the search, if we click in there, um, we'll have some in this case, we don't have quick searches set up. Um, so you can choose to have them or not have them. Um, so a lot of good progress there. We will be working, <laughs> we'll talk about it later, but we'll be working on, um, on getting the first app actually deployed out into the app stores um, for the, the first library branded version of Lita. Um, but yeah, the idea is this is then your own individual one that people will not search for Aspen Lita in the App Store, they will search for um, for your library name and find it. So is that uh, just yeah. part of the package, Mark, or is there an additional cost to customize? Yeah, there's going to be an additional cost for that, and that's mainly because it is going to be a fair bit of work on our end. Um, so there's um, we can get your pricing on that um, if you're interested. And the idea would be that for a consortium like Click, it could either be branded so you could have a Click library app, or um, if one of your individual libraries wanted to have an app branded for them, so say like Pines Plains wanted um, their own app, they could have their own app as well. So we got a lot of flexibility built into it. Um, anything else there that we think that's good? I uh, will take over sh screen sharing again. Um, so some of the other things that we worked on, so that was Lita. Um, we've done a lot of work with Evergreen. Um, we're learning lots and lots about Evergreen, getting that integrated. That's gonna get some more 
attention, um, some additional work on folio. Um, some of our partners um, overseas are, are getting really interested in that. Um, so we wanted to make it easy to get started on that. Um, made some ILL updates um, to be able to see for, we're starting to have some Koha libraries actually integrating with inReach. Um, so for anybody that uses inReach as your ILL system, um, we have the ability to show more links to inReach. So either within the search bar um, or at the end of search results, um, you can see those results and then link out to your inReach system. Um, there's just some indexing updates. Um, Open Archive is really cool. So um, we've had a couple of, of cases where we've had a hard time pulling covers out of some Open Archive um, systems just because they've got multiple different templates for display. So we're gonna support that now. So um, we'll be able to pull from different kinds of, of templates on the back end so that you'll get more covers. Um, like overdrive is showing on order. Um, the big thing that we did that everybody's gonna see is, um, and in response to some of the feedback we've gotten from y'all about uh, some of your priorities, some, some more search um, capabilities. So one of the things that a lot of people were seeing was um, like, um, if we do a search for brown bear, brown bear, what do you see with the question mark? It was previously not giving, or well, it was showing everything. <laughs> so now it's gonna show us brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? Um, so we're properly handling um, those question marks at the end of search terms. Um, we also did some updates um, related to stemming. So stemming in a couple of different places. So the first one is subject searching. So we were having issues where if somebody was searching for like productivity, um, the stemmed version of that. So basically a lot of search engines do this where they say, hey, we're going to say maybe people didn't mean productivity, maybe they meant um, product. And in this case, that's probably not right, especially for subjects. Um, so if you search for productivity now, you're gonna see productivity, not anything that's stemmed from that. Um, it, it still does a little bit of stemming. It's just a way less aggressive one. Um, so things like if you're searching for products, it will still find product, but um, it's not gonna do productivity and product are pretty significantly, um, pretty significantly different subjects. So we didn't wanna do that. Um, and then kind of similarly, um, for author, so if we did a search for like lovely, um, it would stem that back and do anything that included love. Well, most people aren't thinking of doing stemming with authors. So um, we're gonna do just search for lovely. Um, so you may get more no hit results, but you're gonna get the results. Um, other things that we did, um, a lot of, um, kind of special things for some different libraries. So again, a, a few more Sierra updates, um, symphony updates. Um, so there was a request um, to be able to apply some automatic notes um, to holds um, when placing a hold so that they could kind of figure out what system they were coming from. So we added the capability to do that. Um, Web builder, like there's all kinds of fun things that people are finding, interesting. Bugs. So like <laughs> um, if a custom form was embedded on a custom page, it can be submitted properly. So that's fixed. Um, a lot of these other updates are um, little things that uh, if you've seen them, you'll love them. And if you don't know about them, you'll love them too. You just won't know about them as much. So, um, so yeah, there, there's some things that are kind of specific there that were high priorities for partners, uh, as well as just some general good things. Um, um, so those are the big things. So a lot of backend stuff this time. Um, I'll pass the mic on and pass over to Jordan to talk about the release preview and roadmap. 
Hi, everyone. I posted a link in the chat to the deck that I'm about to share just in case uh, in case the text is a little smaller, you want a copy for yourself. Let me get that screen shared. Okay, so the goal for this part of the meeting is just to kind of go over um, what our plan was, how closely did we track to our plan, and what are we thinking is coming next. So a very quick review of 22.02, and really this is 22.02 and 22.01.10, as Mark said. Uh, there was actually quite a lot of work to do for some ILS specific, um, some ILS specific work. Notably at the top here, you'll see um, implement those Sierra APIs. This is going to make our system, especially for Sierra libraries, a lot better in the long run. It's something we needed to do right now, so we just decided to take care of it. Uh, as anticipated, we continued to work on the Evergreen implementation. This one's been a little bit of a bear for us, um, having to try a whole bunch of different things to get Aspen hooked up, but we are uh, well on our way. So that's great. Uh, we have been doing some facet updates and fixes and some search. Uh, Mark was showing you some of those things just now. Uh, we didn't mention it last time. It was just something we left out. Uh, but the LIDA availability for individual library partners that obviously, since you just saw a demo, that was something that we got to. We are reviewing the next Koha release. I um, mean, we did we will continue to, we started to, uh, for any changes that are needed for Aspen. So if there are changes, you'll expect to see those um, around the time that you're getting a new Koha release. I went ahead and added partner priorities in here, and I want to talk about partner priorities a little bit. Uh, we do a lot of this. Uh, we want to make sure that in addition to tackling the big things that's important to a lot of people, that we are working on the things that are most important to your library. But we also need to know what those are. Uh, so if you have something that is kind of your top priority and you're just like, when are they going to get to this? Well, we'd like an update on this. Uh, please let us know. Please comment on that ticket. If it doesn't have a ticket, um, then put in a ticket for it. Uh, if you ever want to talk priorities, you are always welcome to schedule a meeting with me um, in Calendly. And that's is just to say we want to make sure we're tackling your top priorities that you're getting the things that you need. And that's what you're seeing a lot of in the releases right now too. Uh, we did a review of the partner search facet grouping issues as we talked about last time. That was your top priority and I'm going to show you the results of that in a second. Um, and then, like I said, search improvements and questions. Things that kind of changes between these two sides, um, other than adding that additional Sierra work. Um, well, I, I talked about Evergreen already. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, we took some things off. So the searchable help documentation didn't quite make it in. Um, the Hoopla binge pass, no one is talking to us about this. So if no one is really, if this is a huge, huge thing for your library, let us know. But we just kind of moved that down in priority. Um, and then the e-commerce planning, we started that, we're doing the planning, um, but you'll see in a little bit, we're not planning on starting that work next release, um, so we have a little bit more to do there. I want to talk about the facet and record grouping suggestions. So last time I asked you, you said, if you have priorities in this area, you said it was important, send to me what is your most important. And I got thank you to those libraries that did send me that feedback. The other thing I did is I combed through all of the tickets that we had on facets and all of the tickets that we had on record grouping to look for the things that came up the most frequently and that were causing people the most pain. Um, so this is kind of the result of that analysis. I'll go over what each of these are, but then I want to open it up briefly if anyone has comments on these things or if there are things here that you think, oof, like it just didn't make the cut and I think this is really important. This is one of the places we can talk about that. Um, so I'll ask for that feedback after we go over these. So top enhancements for facets. The first one is allow searching in facets. So if you are not aware right now, for each of our facets, you only get to see the top 100 results. So if you do a blank search and then you want to look at that subject facet, you're only going to see the 100 most common subjects in your catalog. Um, and what we want to do is allow people to use those facets. And when I say facets, I mean those filters on the side. Uh, to kind of search within those to find the subject that they're looking for. Someone else really needed to apply a shelving location. So if you can search within those facets, you can limit um, by whatever's in those facets, even if it's not in the top 100 results. Uh, the next thing is the ability to exclude a term using facets. I'm not going to lie, this one makes me a little bit nervous. We need to figure out the UX on this. This isn't something that's normally done with facets. But we have had a lot of people asking for this. And with the way library content is and the way users, we find users don't use advanced search. 
but sometimes they need a way to say not this. I want this, but not this. So this would say, okay, show me everything in the catalog, but I don't want to see Hoopla. I don't like Hoopla. Maybe my Hoopla checkouts have run out. Um, so I want to say, don't show me Hoopla. Show me all of the other eBooks. Um, the next one is suppressing a term from a facet. So this would be on the staff side. This is saying, I don't want this thing, this result to be in a facet. One of the use cases for this is various artists. So if you're various authors, if you're doing a search and you want to narrow it by the author facet, one of the big things that's going to come up is various, right? Because a lot of them say various. Um, if you don't want to show that, you don't want that to be available in the author facet, then um, that's what we're talking about doing, saying just don't show that. Like show me real authors, not that one. Um, the last one is allowing facets to apply at the bib level in addition to the grouped work level. So right now, if you do a blank search and limit by audiobook and maybe limit by Spanish, we are showing grouped works that have either of that either of those apply. So it might be an audiobook in English and then a print book in Spanish, which is probably not what you're looking for, right? If you're looking for an audiobook in Spanish. But if we can apply those facets at the bib level or give the option to, um, then you have the ability to find Spanish books, Spanish books that are audiobooks. Um, again, this is going to be another, some of these have some tricky UX things, user experience, usability uh, to make them work, but this is what we're showing are your priorities. Uh, for record grouping, um, the number one thing is allowing a manual regroup after ungrouping. If you are not aware, if you ungroup something from a grouped work, that thing cannot be regrouped with something else. And um, we know that this is causing problems for um, a number of titles. It's interesting because this is a feature that we used to have in Aspen and giving people the ability to ungroup and regroup gives them a lot of power. And we, a lot of messes were created. People just getting very creative with how um, grouped works work. So we're gonna think carefully about how to do this, how to caveat this, uh, but we do hear you and we see that it's a need, that it's not good enough just to say um, ungrouping is fine and let those be separate results. You're not able to create uh, the catalog that you need, but we also wanna do it in a way that's sustainable and that we can support and doesn't create too many, um, too many problems as well. And, um, talking about creating too many problems, the next one is investigate better grouping for Hoopla and Canopy records. Uh, we hear you. This is not, Hoopla and Canopy records are not the best at record grouping. It's causing manual grouping work on your part. Both of these in record grouping, I just, I want to caveat a lot because when we touch record grouping, our goal is always to make things better. And there's a risk when we're playing with it that we make things worse. worse. So we will investigate these. We're going to try to find a way to do it. Um, but it's also possible that we get through that and say it's the best that it can be and we just can't do any better based on the data that we're given and we have to work with the data that we're given but we hear you that it's um, a problem and we're going to see if there's anything we can do to fix it any so any questions about these or things you're like i really thought this would be on this list to start for either facets or record grouping and it's not here uh, so let's talk about it and i will check our chat uh, Tara from Swan says, we definitely have seen people struggle with excluding facets to the point that we hid that option in our old catalog. Okay, interesting. Tara might want to talk to you about that one. I don't know if there's a lot to say, just it's not something that, yeah, I think that especially sometimes the more options you give people, the worse you make things. <laughs> I think the include, exclude, we just saw so many people really, really struggle with that. We also saw a lot of people really struggle with um, advanced search um, in our old catalog and and even in, to an extent to Aspen. So like, but, you know, there's a little bit of a dog whistle there too. Like people don't tend to use it unless they know how most of the time. So yeah, it would just be, like you said, the UX on that would definitely be challenging. And, and yeah, there might be a value in having it at um, maybe in an advanced search. And I, I certainly know like a lot of the, the requests I get for about facets um, tend to be around 
staff building browse categories. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I definitely would like want to, I'd be curious like where that request is coming from. And if it's, you know, to empower staff to like kind of build these more granular browse categories, then that might be a great option for like an advanced search or something um, that wouldn't, um, yeah, wouldn't necessarily like get in the way of, of patrons making some weird and crazy decisions <laughs> and not understanding you know, yeah 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 not understanding and just getting stuck and you know that would that would be um that's always like very sad to see <laughs> yeah understood yeah I I, def I I hear you there and the trickiness um and one of the things this if, if we did this and maybe we could even start just trying it for staff we do have a bug right now where you can't create a browse category from advanced search and if we did these things, it would actually fix that for staff. So maybe something to explore is trying it with staff first and then seeing um, seeing how that rolls out. But yeah, I, it makes me nervous too, I agree. Other comments on anything here or anything not here related to facets or record grouping? All right. Um, I'll pause again at the end for questions if you think of anything. And if there's anything you don't want to bring up with the whole group, um, I'm Jordan Bywatersolutions.com and you can always reach out to me and we can have a conversation that way. Okay, let's see. Next. Um, so this is our plan for 22.03. Um, I just put 22.02 on the left for reference, um, 03 on the right. We are not quite done with Evergreen implementation. This is absolutely our top priority because we need to get our Evergreen partners live. So I'm just going to say that at the outset. Um, our Mark especially is going to be very focused on this at the beginning. And what we're able to accomplish, the rest of the release is largely going to depend on, on how smoothly that goes. Um, another thing that we have to do just for one to make sure all of our libraries are working smoothly with Aspen is um, handle the sym a symphony export for real-time updates um, for a library that needs to handle that export in a slightly different way than our live libraries do right now. Um, so making sure that all of Aspen works with all of our libraries and that um, that's always going to be our top priority for partners. Um, and then, like I said, partners top priority. The partner priorities for 22.03. Um, if you're not working with us or communicating with us, your very top priorities, again, I want to encourage you to reach out and do that if you have that ticket or that feature that you're just really waiting on. That's It's the people that are reaching out and doing that and, and letting us know. We're making sure to try to get those things in. And that's where you're seeing that long list from Mark for things that are kind of like maybe not quite related to our overarching priorities, but they're saying, hey, this is really important to me. Um, so keep communicating to us about that. Um, if you have those things, and if you are not communicating with us yet, um, please do that. And we'll, we'll start to try to do a little bit more outreach as well. Mark mentioned we have some more LIDA stuff coming out. Uh, so we're gonna be rolling out LIDA for individual library partners. We're gonna be working on testing with that. That's a big part of our work this month. And then um, based on feedback from some of those partners that are we're working with, um, these are some of their priorities that they need in order to be able to offer it. And that's providing more information on the LIDA item details page. And this is really making sure like all copies that the library owns appear. Um, some enhancements to my account. We are working closely with our uh, partners with Knowledgeware. They're also very interested in the app and they've done some really cool things with my account. It has a slide, it's very mobile, a, a slide out drawer on the side with my account, it's very mobile friendly. So we're gonna be looking, incorporating their work that they're working on for Lita into um, our app um, and kind of working towards more of a joint path in terms of everyone working on the same app together. Um, and then finally linked accounts. So making sure that linked accounts work in Lita. These last things down here I have listed as stretch goals. So these are largely gonna depend on how that ever, evergreen implementation goes, how much time that takes us. Uh, LibCal integration, one of the priorities that everyone was talking about was events and calendars. LibCal actually last year did a bunch of work on APIs for us. And I know we, when we talk to you, um, we say, hey, if you're working, we can integrate if the vendor has an API. So go talk to that vendor about the API. And if they build the API, then we can integrate with it. Well, LibCal is one of those vendors that they built an API for us. Um, so we need to be, be good partners and make sure that we work with the API that they built so that LibCal can integrate um, into Aspen. So that's um, a priority there. And then those facets, updates, and fixes, we'll see if we can get some of those in uh, for next time. If not, then those will definitely um, be looking at 22.04. 
Um, and then we're still, I'm going to continue working on planning for the e-commerce additions and enhancements. So again, if you meant to mention something to me about e-commerce, a platform that you're interested in, a feature um, that you're interested in for an existing platform, please reach out. Any questions on 22.03 and our plans? Don't see anything in chat either. Okay, so um, this is just not intended to be any kind of, this is, this is what we're thinking. This is on the Aspen team, we need to think further ahead. We need to be, we, that's why we survey you. We're paying attention to um, what we think libraries are interested in. So this is just to give you a glimpse into our thought process. None of this is set in stone. Um, it's always flexible. And um, I just wanna say that like we're planning, but our plans are flexible. So for Aspen 22.04, we're anticipating some things not being finished in 22.03. So if we don't quite finish that LibCal integration, we'll have some stuff to do there. And obviously um, the facets record grouping and search updates that you all mentioned um, as priority or something that we wanna get done there. Uh, we've noticed a couple things with side loads that are a little bit off. We have workarounds on our side to help with these, um, but they are very labor intensive. Um, so we're gonna fix those things for side loads to make sure that side loads work well on both sides. Um, and then if we're able to, we'll start those additional e-commerce integrations. Longer term, the, the bottom two squares are really just what are we thinking kind of medium term and then what are we thinking long term? I won't go over these individually because like I said, they're, um, they're very soft plans right now. Let's put it that way. But I want you to know what we're thinking and you'll see, you'll recognize a lot of the um, high level features that you've prioritized there. Any questions about just our planning review? Or any questions about the, since we've had some time for that to sink in the facets or the record grouping changes? All righty, then I will stop sharing. And I think Cal is next on the agenda. Hi everyone. Um, we just want to do like a little community shout out. We've had a few um, libraries go live recently in the last few weeks. So we put the links in the agenda if you want to check through like their catalogs and look at what they've done. Um, but we're always excited to welcome new Aspen partners. So we had Maine uh, Consortium in New Jersey, Yavapai in Arizona. Uh, yay, Chanel's here. Um, and Pioneer in Nebraska. So we just, again, just want to welcome everyone. Um, we're excited to have you guys and check out their catalogs and see the new features and things that like they're doing. Um, and then also I just wanted to plug that PLA is coming up. So um, Bywater staff will, so a few of us will be um, in Portland at PLA from it's March 23rd to 25th. And we're just asking if anyone wants to do like a little micro presentation, like 10 to 15 minutes um, on Aspen, open source, Koha, community, um, show and tell off things at your library and that you're, you're you know, using in your OPAC. Um, we'd love to have you um, if you're going. And uh, there is a link, uh, it's a bit.ly, join us at PLA. There's a little form to fill out um, to let you know, uh, to let us know like what you're gonna be presenting on. Um, and then Jesse will get back to you. She's kind of like scheduling all the presentations. So if you have any questions about that too, um, you can talk to Jesse or um, outreach at bywatersolutions.com. But um, we're excited to do an uh, in, in person conference cautiously, but it's been two years uh, since PLA. So we're trying to get a lot of our partners um, who are going to be there uh, to do some presentations. So that's all I have. Okay, it looks like next is the PTFS. PTFS Europe Aspen release. This is really exciting for us. Um, we've been trying to help other partners be able to support Aspen. And the more people we have using Aspen, the more benefits for all of us. So this is the first release outside of North America. And this is the first non-Bywater support for Aspen. So I put the link in chat. Uh, this is Newcastle, um, Newcastle Libraries in England, um, please browse Aspen and take a look. And we are just so, so, so very excited to see this go live. We're expecting another one in the next few weeks from PTFS Europe. Uh, so just wanted to share. And um, we're also working on um, being able to share code more easily 
um, and being able to contribute and get easily get contrib contributions from them um, that we can share with all of you. Um, so one of the things in um, standardizing our release schedule, that was one of the things behind it is giving them some um, some dates to work towards so that they can start to contribute code. But yep, uh, go ahead and browse Newcastle and we're super excited. We hope you are too. Thank you for the update. Um, so next on our agenda, we have a slot for a community update um, from the first Aspen community meeting. So um, I think that would be maybe Tara or I don't see Sam here. So yeah, we'd love to hear how that went. Hi, I think it went very well. I had to peep out a little early, but I think Brian was also there. Um, and we have um, a few little homework items that came out of that meeting. Um, one was to set up the Aspen Community Slack channel, which Brian did. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, so now we have a new shiny Aspen Community channel in Slack. So definitely check that out and subscribe to it if you want to see our agendas and updates. Um, yeah, updates, conversations there. I know Brian posted a really nice, good, long chat in there um, this month. And we're looking to um, we're looking to gather feedback from your library staff, patrons, uh, consortia libraries about what minimum features you would need to go live on Aspen if you're not or Aspen Lita, excuse me, the um, Aspen Lita app if you're not already live. Um, and then we also wanted to gather some feedback from library staff and catalogers about what you'd like to see around better grouping with variant additions. So those will probably be our two big discussion topics for the next meeting. So if those sound interesting to you, definitely show up or um, leave some of your thoughts in the Slack channel. I guess I could also post the um, link to our meeting and notes if that's um, helpful for y'all. That's all I got. Thank you, Tara. Um, perfect. Yeah, and if, if you're in the, our Slack channel already and you're wanting to join the community um, Slack channel, it's, yeah, you just go down to the add channels button and it's called community. So that's where they'll be. Um, let's see, anything else from anyone else who was there, Brian or? Hi. That was everything that happened in that meeting and everything that happened after. It was a very <laughs> good summary. <laughs> Perfect. Well, um, let's see here. Next, I think I'm going to pass it over to Mark uh, for a, an announcement and a conversation about something that he ran across. So yeah, take it so away, we Mark. Were, <laughs> thanks. Um, we were doing some, in, well, we do a ticket time every day where we talk internally about all the different tickets that come up. And one of them was a conversation about creating browse categories and collection spotlights and how, what lists were able to be used for, for those. Um, and we realized, and this is probably a holdover from old times, um, is that right now any public list can be used to create a browse category and collection spotlight, which has good sides and bad sides. Um, so it is everything that is public, um, which means you can feature anybody's, whether or not they have permissions to make it shareable or not. Um, it does kind of clutter up the lists. Um, so you might see a lot more. You might have staff members that are creating public things that aren't searchable um, or community members making things that are public. Um, we thought it would probably be a good idea to limit those to only being searchable lists, which would make the lists, a list of lists that you could generate from them from a lot smaller. Um, but before we did that, we wanted to check to see if anybody was relying on um, public lists that weren't searchable. Um, does anybody have any cases right now that this would break? Um, That's an unknown, but it could be. So okay. I will have to check. Uh, okay. Yeah, I will have to follow up with the staff about that. But that, cool. that that is the that does have the potential to break things. I don't yeah. know how. 
what the settings are on the list that we're using for all of our collection spotlights at this point. Yeah. So yeah, I guess it's just a request. Oh, go ahead, Tara. Sorry. So say I think we have staff using. I think we. I'm almost positive we have staff that are using lists that are not searchable as okay. spotlights and browse categories. Not that I'm against that change. Um, we could definitely tell them they have to. <laughs> they just have to make those searchable, and we could help them with that if that's something the group wants to do. Okay. Well, I'm glad that we didn't just make the change then, because it sounds like we would have probably broken at least two two sites. Um, so basically, yeah, like I'll call it homework. But if people wanted to do some investigation, um, I think we'll leave it as is for now. Um, but it would be a good way to kind of clean up those lists, make them smaller. Um, so let us know if that's a change you want us to make. Um, or if we even wanted to add another one that was like, this is eligible for browse categories and collection spotlights, um, in addition to it being searchable. Um, and then you could assign so that only certain staff could create those. Um, so something to think about for next time, but we can table it for, for now. And we definitely won't make the changes right away. Um, yeah. I think those were our big topics of conversation, right, Morgan? So I guess. Yep. Yeah. So now it's open time. If anyone has any questions or anything they want to talk about, this is your time. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, just a question. There is a big map or big picture about uh, how the technology or the uh, will be upgraded. So uh, like PHP 8 or support for Ubuntu uh, 22 or Debian or uh, uh, just another aspect of Aspen. So uh, which technology will be used during this year or next year or uh, support like containers or uh, which MySQL or Solera uh, distribution. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I see a, 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 a roadmap for use Aspen, but not the back end of all about this. Uh, I saw maybe we will, will be statistic, but not which software uh, are thinking to be used for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out like when we're making upgrades to MySQL and Solar and that kind of thing and scheduling those in. Um, yeah, we've had discussions on it, um, but nothing completely concrete. Um, so we we do need to start deciding, is that something that we wanna look at upgrading on a fixed schedule, upgrading um, kind of as new releases come available. Um, there's certainly things that we do have to adapt to as they, they come out. Um, I think that's a good topic for conversation. Because um, yeah, th there's definitely things like we're on CentOS for some of ours, which is nearing end of life. Uh, still got a few more years, but uh, <laughs> yeah, figuring out, out where all those move to and that kind of thing. So, um, and, and some of those are, are more of like a hosting thing. Um, some of it is conversations for the people that are, um, self-hosted as well as other people supporting it. So um, maybe that's something. So like this support organization, so like um, Becky and uh, PTFS Europe and Knowledgeware and Bywater, we've talked, we haven't talked about that specifically, but maybe we should. Um, and if there's, is there interest from a broader community on talking? I mean, a lot of those are, 
low level things that nobody actually cares about other than the people doing support. So we could also um, break those out into a different meeting if we wanted to um, for the people that are self-hosted and the people that are doing development work on it. Preferences for doing it as a separate meeting. Okay. I mean, I would probably come yeah. to that meeting. Okay. If that was a separate meeting. Um, okay. I know that I was, I mean, just, I mean, as a, I was excited to see a Debian installer script, right? I don't know how yeah. I missed that in the past. So as someone that has tried to change that installer script with mixed results, yeah. you know, I'd be interested. Yeah, um, and the Debian, so those are things that are international partners. So PTF has Europe created that. We've got um, at Bywater one, one site that's set up on Debian. Um, and then I know Becky's, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but hopefully I'm close. <laughs> Becky's using it as well um, with Debian and has done some dockerization and containerization work. So um, there's a lot of things going on. Um, so yeah, we could see about setting up something for people that are interested in more of the like system admin -y guts. Definitely, yep. Um, Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Any other questions or things they'd like to discuss with us or the community? I think I've seen a dark theme teased on Bywater test site. So I'd love if you would share that config. That's that's it. <laughs> we keep poking at a dark theme um, and never have time to kind of finish it. So we've got, I'm trying to even think where it is right now. Um, it's our model. Is it our model? We're on model two. Um, I'd be happy. We could definitely share the settings with you. Um, and then, yeah, it's looking for people to help. Um, we'll kind of finish that off and look for places that need additional adjustment. Because um, we've kind of, the idea then would be you have a light and a dark theme that then patrons could choose between. Maybe also have a high contrast theme for those patrons that have. A lot of trouble with with color and need a super high essentially black and white contrast um, so that people could could pick what they wanted and we're, we're starting some of that and, um those are those those are really good ideas yeah so for us we're kind of still you know tinkering with this idea of aspen on display screens mm -hmm. and if we had a dark mode to kind of start with for us even if it was just not finished yet because the use case would be a little different. It wouldn't have to be perfect, but we could start with it. I think that would be helpful for us. Okay. Um, yeah, let us find the best, um, the, the most complete one to, to pass you. So we'll, we'll take a look for that. What other topics do people have? Anything else anybody wants to cover? Pretty excited about the, the upcoming releases. So the uh, 2202 deploys to test servers and anybody in implementation tonight. And then next Tuesday night, so that it is available on Wednesday uh, morning until production sites. So um, please, anybody that has a test server or implementation, let us know if you see any issues. Um, and we'll work on fixing those between now and release, um, if there is anything that people see. Um, and if you want to test Aspen, our Aspen test server, 
um, if you need to log into that or anything to do some testing, we're happy to provide one of those as well. So. Uh, how we can ask for user and password to try? Okay. And just Slack one of us, Gabriel, that would work. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so are you doing two releases then at once? No, it's just gonna be one. So some people got, so everything that is in 21.0, 01.10 <laughs> um, is also in 22.02. So just a few people got the 22.01.10 um, and it was those Sierra libraries or, or anybody that had an urgent or a, a more urgent thing that couldn't wait until the full, um, full release. Um, so it, it will just be 22.02, but if you have a test system, um, you would get it tonight Whereas if you have just a Drew production system, we'll just push it to production next Tuesday. All right. Okay, anything else? Are we, we all ready to <laughs> go forth and use Afton? All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming to the Aspen Gathering. Um, definitely, if you have any questions or concerns about anything we talked to, about today, reach out to us on Slack um, or submit a support ticket. You know the drill. Um, and otherwise, we'll be posting a recording of this later this evening. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs>